Okay, how's it going everyone? My name is Scott and welcome to my channel where I'm here to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss why when I sell options, specifically naked options, naked calls, puts, strangles, etc., why I prefer to hedge losing positions with stock. And so this is definitely a bit contrary to some of the more mainstream option selling content creators like Tasty Trade or Option Alpha, because when you do have a losing position, they would say you should actually sell the other side. Meaning, let's say I sold the naked put option and then the stock just dropped and went right through my put strike. They would recommend you actually sell a call option to take in more credit. Now, by no means am I saying this is a bad idea. I still use that approach. The exception for me is it's not my first line of defense. When I have a losing trade, the first thing I do is not sell a call option against my put, or I don't roll in the untested side on my strangle. I only deal with stock first. And so in this video, you're gonna see exactly why I prefer to do it this way, why I prefer to hedge with stock first, and then if that's not going well, at that point, I'll then start to sell other options or adjust my strikes. Now, as always, before we get started here, if you are new to the channel, I just want to let you know that I do also teach on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two-week free trial. And so with that being said, we're going to jump on over to my computer now and we'll get things started. Okay, let's dive in here now. And the first stock we're gonna look at is going to be Seagate Technology. And the reason why I chose the stock is because I actually currently have a position on it. You can see here, I'm short one of the 82 and a half strike put option contracts. And so far this position is working out pretty well. Right, if I zoom in here a little bit, I sold that put option right here when the stock hit this major support level. And since then we did get a nice bounce. And with the stock currently just under 88 bucks per share, like I said, so far we're doing pretty good. But what if the stock were to suddenly reverse and just plummet and go through my put strike? What am I going to do? At some point, I have to do something. I have to hedge this position. Now, what many other option trading content creators will tell you what you should do in this situation would be to sell a call option against your put option. So for example, if we come back to the trade tab here, let's say the stock went from 88 down to maybe 77 or 75, well below my put strike. Tasty Trade, for example, or Option Alpha, or a few other option selling content creators would tell you that you should sell an out of the money call option, maybe at the 95 strike, because when you do this, you'll take in extra credit. You can see right now, I could sell this 95 strike call option for around 200 bucks in additional credit. Now I will say if the stock was actually at 75 bucks per share, let's say, this contract would not be at 200 bucks, it might be at 100 or even a bit less, but still you get the idea because the more credit you take in, the further you can push out your break even points. And also the delta on your call option here would serve to partially cancel out the delta on your put option and that would slow the bleeding, slow down the losses. Now this approach is definitely not wrong. I don't have any actual issue with this. In fact, this is something I would do, but not as my first choice, not as my first line of defense when defending a losing position. Right, because if I sell a put option on this stock, I'm obviously bullish on it. I want the stock to go up. And if the stock just goes even lower, I'm probably only gonna get even more bullish on it. But if I were to sell a call option now, that's gonna to totally change the entire position. Because now, instead of just a naked put, I'm gonna have a short strangle. And that's a very different position. Now, depending where you sell the call option, what strike you choose, you might still have on a bullish skewed strangle. And again, the way you figure that is by looking at the delta on the call option you want to sell. So for example, if the stock dropped down to 75 bucks per share, the delta on my 82 and a half strike put option might go from 29, where it's at now, to maybe 60 or 65. And then if I sell a call option, an out of the money call option with a delta of maybe 30 or 20, something substantially less than the delta on my put option, well, that's still gonna give me a bullish skewed strangle. However, that being said, deltas are dynamic. They will change. So if the stock actually does reverse, if it takes a huge dip, goes below your put strike, and then it bounces and just continues up higher, those deltas are going to shift and your bullish strangle is not gonna become a bearish strangle. 
And who knows, if the stock just explodes higher, it could blow through your call. And that push higher is exactly what you wanted in the first place. That's why I sold the put option. But now by selling that call, I've now totally changed the position so that if eventually I am correct directionally and the stock does actually recover at some point, well, now I've kind of screwed myself. I actually ended up getting the move I wanted in the end, but that call option totally took away the profits. So this is why as my first line of defense is I don't sell the other side. I don't sell call options or I don't roll in the untested side for strangles. And I'll talk about that in a second. The first thing I do is I hedge with stock. So in the case of my put here, if CK technology just plummeted, I would start to short shares of the stock. That's how you hedge a naked put option. And if you want to hedge a naked call option, you would buy shares of the stock. And when you deal with the actual stock itself, you are not actually changing the fundamental core strategy. I still have just a naked put option on. I'm just using the stock as a way to slow the bleeding if Seagate continues just to push lower and lower and lower. And then if the stock does reverse, and in the end I eventually get the move I wanted, well, I would have no call option here that would get in the way. Now I might take some losses on the short stock on the hedge here, because let's say for example, once the stock gets down to 80 bucks per share, at that point I short 50 shares of stock. And then from there, after a few more days, maybe the stock goes all the way down to 75, like I've been saying. And so great, my short shares are making money, which are offsetting the losses on the put option, which was the whole point. But if Seagate stops at 75 and turns around and starts recovering, at some point I'm gonna have to buy back those shares. So if I shorted them initially at 80 bucks per share, and then I buy them back at let's say 82 or 82 and a half at the strike of my put, well, I'm gonna lose $2.50 per share. And bring out the calculator here really quickly. So if I lose $2.50 per share times 50 shares, that's an overall loss of 125 bucks, which is not a big deal because I sold this put option initially for over $400 in credit. So ultimately, by the expiration date, by August 20th, if Seagate totally recovers and ends up well above my short put strike, this put option will expire worthless, which means of the 400 bucks or so I sold the put option for, if I only have to give up maybe 125, that means I still walk away with a $275 profit. And again, this stock can go to the moon for all I care. It can go to 100 bucks per share, 200, 1,000, doesn't matter. There's no call option getting in the way. Same thing for a strangle. As you can see down here, I have a few short strangles on currently in my portfolio. Let's take a look at my EWZ strangle here. So EWZ. And in this case, if I go to the trade tab, you can see I'm short the 41 strike call option and also the 36 strike put option. So now in this case, let's say EWZ explodes and just blows through my call. Well, at some point I gotta do something. I gotta hedge this position so I would start buying shares of the stock first, as opposed to what Tasty Trade would tell you to do first, and that would be to roll up the put, roll up the untested side, which basically means buying back your original put and then selling a new put a bit closer or a lot closer to where the stock is now trading. So perhaps if EWZ goes from 38.62 all the way to 43 or something, maybe at that point I would buy back my 36 strike put option and sell the 40 strike put option. And in doing so, I would collect additional credit. That's the whole point of doing this. But once again, I've changed, totally changed the entire position. And now I have a very, very narrow strangle, which means if the stock reverses and comes back down, it could very easily blow through my put strike, causing another problem. And I've seen this exact kind of thing happen many, many times in my own experience. There have been quite a few times where I put on a strangle like this, and at some point during the expiration cycle, the stock breached one of my strikes. And so as a result, I rolled in the untested side. I moved the non-tested option only to see the stock totally reverse and then blow through my other option. And if I had let my options alone, then by the expiration date, I would have had a full winner. But because I moved one of my strikes, I actually ended up with a loser. Moreover, one more thing I wanna say about this is sometimes, you can't even move the untested side, or in the case of Seagate, just sell the other side for a decent credit. What's the point of buying back my put option and selling the 40 strike put option, or perhaps even the 41 strike put option, 
if I only collect maybe an extra 30 bucks in credit? That's not worth the risk of having the stock reverse and now just blowing through my put strike. So again, that's why I prefer to use stock as my first line of defense when my strikes get breached pretty badly. If the stock starts to explode, I'll start buying shares of stock. And then if it crashes, I'll start shorting shares of stock, knowing full well that if I do get a reversal in my favor, I can remove the stock hedge for some small losses. There's always a give and take with protection, but my position, my strangle will be completely unchanged. I did not change any of my strikes. I'm simply using the stock as a way to protect myself in the case where I'm super, super wrong on my position and the stock just explodes or crashes. Because even in those scenarios, like for example, what we saw with AMC, right, where the stock went from around 12 bucks per share all the way to 72, in a situation like this, rolling up your put is not going to do that much for you. It would be much better to just buy shares of stock until perhaps you fully covered your call option that's now getting screwed so that you can fully cap your losses, right? Because what I mean by that, if you sell a call option, let's say on AMC, one call option is tied to 100 shares of stock. So if at some point, if your call got blown out, you bought 100 shares of stock, then no matter how much higher AMC goes, you're totally fine. You're not going to make or lose any money because the profits you'll make on the 100 shares will totally cancel out the losses on your short call option. And that is not something that just rolling up your put option will provide you. It will certainly help, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I don't think moving the untested side is a bad strategy, but it still leaves you with completely unlimited, undefined risk. Whereas buying or shorting shares of stock is a way to cap your risk with initially totally naked options. Now, finally here, I do want to say, let's come back to Tau Education Group now. I will say there is a time and a place for me, this is what I do, there is a time and a place where I will sell the other side or I will roll in the untested side on a strangle. So in the case of Tau Education Group here, I've talked about this stock before. Let's go to the July expiration cycle. Originally with this position, I was only short two naked put options at the 35 strike. But now you can see I'm also short two call options at the 37 and a half strike. Why did I do this? And the reason why I did this is because I actually lost a bit too much money than I would like from having to short shares of the stock as my hedge on these put options. So originally, I sold those puts right when the stock was around 40 bucks per share or so, somewhere around here. And as you can see, the stock just kept going lower. So along the way down, I was shorting shares of stock to cover or hedge my put options. But as you can see here, along the way down, there were some short-term rallies. And as I explained, when you have to cover your hedge, buy back the shares, you're going to do so for a small loss. That's simply the consequence of trying to apply protection to your position. And so eventually, if those small losses start to add up, if they start to really eat away at the total credit I received from selling those put options, then I will have no choice but to start trying to take in extra credit. So originally, my total credit on this position was 450 bucks. I sold two puts for 225 bucks each, so 450 in total. Now, as I was shorting shares of this stock as it was going lower, and then also having to buy those shares back along the way in certain places, eventually I had lost about $300, which left my total credit on this position at only 150. And at this point, I wanted to bolster my credit once again, increase it essentially, and so the way I had to do that was sell two call options. And I sold these calls for 60 bucks each, which is 120 in total. So that brought my credit back to 270 bucks. And this is generally what I like to do. Once I lose over half of my initial credit, at that point, I will go in and sell the other side or roll in the untested side on a strangle. I want to avoid changing my position at all costs until I have no choice but to do that. So basically, I'm combining the typical tasty trade or option alpha approach with my own personal approach because I do definitely believe and agree that selling the other side or rolling in the attested side is a great thing to do, but simply not as your first line of defense, not as your first adjustment. So with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses, links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, 
drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.